ಭವತು ಸಹ ನೌಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯ ಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿದ್ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಗುಡ್ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಮನ್ಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ and welcome one and all those who are able to join now and i have left the meeting id open for anybody to join at any time when it is convenient because it may not be possible for everybody to start at the time that we are starting and if at all you feel that you need to share the meeting id with anybody you can free, freely do so they can join at any time but kind 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 kindly keep, kindly keep your uh, audios muted kindly keep your audios muted you can switch on your video if you feel like but audios kindly keep it muted until we come to talk where you have to say something okay so last talk i realized that few people could not log in because of some technical difficulties and uh, so i decided that i will first have a brief recap of what we understood last time what i spoke last time so the talk is titled as i own my life so i own my life so for every one of us our life the way it is with all its uh, positives negatives is our life and we own that and that life is independent of the relationships that we have with people around us it could be our children it could be our parents it could be our friends it could be our teachers our life is our life and we own that so what is our life so when we look at what our life is this life itself has manifested when we were born as i said probably we uh, this life in scientific terms we say that probably 27 weeks from the time you we conceive we were conceived in the mother's womb we had life for 27 or 24 weeks or 16 weeks different sciences are saying different things but having said all that the life that we know of is on the day when we were born so i was born on 27th april so 27th april is my birthday so that is the way we say the 27th april of one year i was born now how did i come we all came crying we all of us when we came into this world what we did the first thing the accomplishment that we had right in the beginning was to cry so our manifestation of our life started with our crying and from then onwards every agitation we had every need we had we cried and we fulfilled and so the imprints of crying and fulfilling is what started this entire life cycle as we were an infant of maybe one day or two days old that is how it entire thing started so if that is how we were fulfilling all our desires etc etc so is it that those unfulfilled desires is that what makes life meaningful so i used a couplet कि सब कुछ मिल जाए जिंदगी में तो क्या तमन्ना किसकी करोगे अधूरी ख्वाहिशें ही हैं ख्वाहिशें ही है जो जीने का मजा देती है सो व्हेन वी लुक एट इट दैट वे इज इट दैट व्हाट एवर आर आवर अनफुलफिल्ड डिजायर्स व्हाट एवर आर आवर एक्सपेक्टेशंस दैट वी लुक फॉरवर्ड टू इज दैट व्हाट गिवस मीनिंग टू लाइफ और इज दिस वॉट लाइफ इज ऑल अबाउट सो आई एक्सप्लेन टू यू देन दैट दी वॉट एवर मे बी अवर लाइफ सिचुएशन whatever may be our experiences whatever may be our expectations there is an underlying life principle a life energy that is flowing through all of us constantly and how is that flowing we took the example of electricity for example i said that i am using this camera i am using this laptop i am using my headphones i am using a mobile phone all of them are charged through certain points on the electric supply and when i switch on they are all charging if i switch off in some time when the battery collapses they will all go away but the electricity which is the underlying principle behind those sockets those switches that is an unseen force that unseen force is what energizes each and every equipment into action similarly the life principle or the life energy that we talk about is an unseen force in all of us flowing through all of us at all times and as and when we act the way we act that life energy is manifesting through each of us in the way we act in the world this understanding of life is there some time bar that you know we need to know it at the age of 60 we have to know it at the age of 70 we have to know it at the age of 40 no 
there is a saying in uh, hindi um, normally they use that as a dialogue or even in songs jaha uthe waha savera so wherever we wake up whenever we wake up it is daylight there so when you look at it that way there is no time bar all that it requires is that there must be a sense of curiosity in us to want to learn what is this life all about it is like that curiosity is like solving a puzzle like a paheli i took that song example also to speak about that so i said how we were born the first thought was to cry and crying led to fulfillment etc so what are those they are all thoughts that there is some sort of an insecurity there is some sort of a expectation and which we manifested in the form of some agony some speech and that got manifested so what are these they are all thoughts where do these thoughts occur these thoughts occur in the mind so the mind is the place where thoughts occur and the mind is the one which starts linking one thought to the other and one after the other the entire thought process is itself cultivated so and there is no sense in this thought process because thoughts sim simply keep coming we don't know where from it is from some part uh, past memory it is from something that we see now something which we hear now so there is some present experience or a past experience which sort of creates a process in our mind and that thoughts is what the mind is all about so it is uh, gurudev used to say that as the thoughts so the mind as the mind so the man so basically when we look at it a man is made up of the kind of thoughts that he entertains the kind of mind that he has made up of what kind of a mind he cons uh, he is uh, uh, consists of that is the way a man is so if we are like that thoughts the kind of agonies etc is there somewhere from where we can understand ourselves we can understand this life that we own and we were all born without a user manual i said there is no user manual that we had we just simply were born to our mother so that user manual is bhagavad gita this bhagavad gita itself is split into 18 chapters of about 700 verses totally so and each of those chapters are called yogas as i said yogas mean when you have to unite with something so you, even life itself is yoga that a yoga of uniting ourselves with the higher principle from which we are born so that itself is yoga so each of these 18 chapters are called yogas that is how bhagavad gita is constructed so in bhagavad gita what we also understand is that struggle and sacrifice are required for goodness to prevail so unless you are in a position to work towards improving yourself unless you are willing to let go of something and improve yourself there is no success which is possible growth is possible only when you are willing to work for it and then willing to give up something which is which could be lethargy which could be some previous attachment or whatever it is only when you are able to get above them will you be able to grow will you be able to learn that is what this entire principle so where does this which yoga does this entire bhagavad gita start from it starts from arjuna vishada yoga arjuna's vishada grief i said in the last time that grief means a state of mind when an object or a thing or a person of my liking is not available to me at this moment that creates grief so when there is something which is lost or when there is imminently going to be lost that is when this grief entire picture of the grief starts so the first chapter is about arjuna's vishada arjuna vishada yoga that is how the chapter is titled so how is this entire uh, bhagavad gita coming to be known to us there is dhritarashtra who was the king of that kingdom where pandavas and kauravas were there the cousins who were there and there is his minister assistant call him whatever charioteer sanjay now sanjay has been given a power to oversee what is happening in the battlefield and report to his king so if you look at it that way sanjay is like a facebook live youtube live commentator who is relaying whatever is happening there at the battlefield to his king dhritarashtra dhritarashtra the term means dhrita rashtra the one who is holding very firmly to his rashtra which is kingdom now what is he holding on a kingdom that really doesn't belong to him because if you look at the history of that 
he was not the first although he was elder he was not crowned king because of his blindness and he was not only blind physically he was blind mentally that he just could not digest the fact that his younger brother was crowned as the king because he had eyesight as compared to this fellow and then subsequently when the younger brother died he was willingly appointed like a king uh, the king and he should have been like a caretaker but then he held on to the kingdom as if it is his property and we have sanjaya who is his charioteer who is meant to convey what is the job of a commentator comment whatever is happening but as we go on you will understand where leanings of sanjay also are so let us when we to, uh, spoke about life we uh, i mentioned about uh, you know life meaning different things to different people etc etc so i will just share a screen that i could not do last time that was the uh, what words uh, in what words can we relate life i'll just share that screen so if you see this this is like a word cloud of what life could mean to each of us life means various words that come to us at the moment on the basis of what our life situation is for example if today we are having a good bit of people around us and we are you know having a fair amount of Uh, reliance on each other then trust is something which will come very automatically to us if we are having a uh, set of people around us who share with us and who share in our happiness and then we share in their happiness love is something which comes to all, uh, all of us when we are in the form of uh, you know uh, out to do something very uh, you know wanting to achieve something courage is something which comes to uh, comes automatically to us whereas if you are in a position where we are not sure you know something is going to succeed or not succeed apprehension so when you look at the words that come here each of the those words could define what our life situation is at this moment but mind you they will only define our life situation they will not define life itself so for that we need to go beyond what life means uh, to us in this uh, entire word jumble if i were to see so so we will move ahead i'll stop the screen sharing so bhagavad gita what it does is independent of the life situation that we are facing it acts as a guide post as i said the user manual so when we start off bhagavad gita the first two verses in bhagavad gita itself as i said it starts with dhritarashtra vacha what dhritarashtra said and then subsequently what sanjay said in the second verse so what that uh, it starts off with the fear or insecurity of dhritarashtra or the guilt that he has been he has been responsible for wrong done to his nephews by his own sons and because of that something which rightfully belongs to his nephews he is not able to give them and now there are there are two armies now arrayed in fighting against each other so that the wrong which has been done by him is being corrected so now he has got guilt he has got fright that you know possibly if his sons were to lose the war whether he will lose the kingdom or whether he will be called whatever he will be called in terms of negativity so these are the thoughts in which dhritarashtra is asking asking his live commentator sanjay and as i said the uh, bhagavad gita starts with the word mama uh, sorry dharma and it ends with the word mama so when you look at the entire bhagavad gita as a whole it is mama dharma my dharma what is my dharma dharma means not religion dharma means that without which i am not what i am so the understanding of me of that without which i will not be what i am that is bhagavad gita's basically the theme of bhagavad gita as it move ahead and then we went on to uh, verse 3 to 10 which spoke about duryodhana's insecurity because he was afraid that you know he will be losing the war and how he in this fright how he addressed his guru wrongly how he went on to uh, speak rudely to his guru and the kind of uh, words that he used and he wanted to create a security ring around himself and his warriors so that they don't get destroyed even though his army was 11 to 7 better in number as compared to the pandavas he had this fright because he knew at the heart that he was wrong that is the theme with which he is starting so we develop these kind of uh, fears this fright with this kind of uh, security ring that we want to create we develop these also even in our day to day living whenever we are in, you know afraid of a situation we are uh, probably apprehensive you know something is not likely to go well we also develop these kind of thoughts we also develop these kind of insecurities 
so only through right understanding only through right understanding can we preserve this value system both whether it is to do with our family or whether it is to do our with our work only with, with right understanding can we do that which is what this guide post will take us forward we had the case of drona and bhishma the insults that said, the duryodhana was giving yeah. was to his guru drona and of course bhishma was the commander in chief of the army and they owed their loyalty to the kingdom because the kingdom is what gave, gave them what they shelter uh, or they were responsible for the kingdom so the others who were arraying in the war for the kauravas were actually mostly arraying for their loyalty towards bhishma or drona or towards the kingdom whereas duryodhana in the uh, vanity that he was thinking that they were all fighting for him for his sake they were doing it duryodhana actually is the name uh, is uh, means somebody who it is very difficult to defeat him in a in a battle in a yuddha uh, he is very difficult to beat him but despite that he was afraid he was insecure because he knew at his heart that what he had done to his cousins was wrong so when we look at the way sanjay is commentating in this entire first to 13 whatever we heard, uh, heard come the commentary itself is in the form of leaning towards what the cause of the pandavas are because he knew in his heart even though he was a commentator that the values were actually necessary whatever was being spoken was for good but whereas the kauravas were in the side of the wrong so this narrative to an extent in sanjay sanjay's case may sound partisan particularly when i come after this to what i what is coming after that so i start i ended uh, the last uh, one saying that bhishma blew his conch which was like a roar of a lion simhanadam and thus the kauravas became the aggressors in the war because by the uh, in, in that traditional warfare the person who blows the conch is the one who declares the war the first uh, conch is the one who declares the war so bhishma blew the conch bhishma was silently listening to all the insults that duryodhana was giving to his guru and yet he realized that in this entire conversation duryodhana was actually making his entire uh, the energy of level of his army low because he was talking all negativity so he said that it is important that the warriors be brought out of their stupor so he blew his conch so in that respect we can say that bhishma fired the first bullet even though no arrow was fired no bullet was fired he fired the first bullet we can say that so we could say that the kauravas were the aggressors and the others followed some other uh, things etc followed so this is where we ended the last talk with so we will go forward now after that i encouraged all of you last time also to ask whatever questions you want or maybe you can you have certain perspectives and i did receive one or two perspectives from all of you so i encourage you to come i'll be i'll be breaking midway once and then i'll be breaking once again in the end i encourage you to come up with whatever questions you have whatever queries whatever perspectives you have this is more as i said it's a the prayer itself says it's a sharing it's a journey that we are doing together so after the talk i received a couple of queries i would say perspectives i would say so somebody said that you are quoting the electricity metaphor as an example so we don't live life but life lives through us this is what was one of the perspectives through interesting but let us understand what i had said and let us understand it a little more uh, uh, in a little more in a detail manner slightly so if you have a container you have some contents in the container now if you remove for example if that contents are mercury mercury we know is a something which will just simply flow away you cannot capture it you cannot hold it also supposing you have a container of mercury and you pour that uh, uh, sorry the container in which you pour the mercury now if the container is not there the contents cannot be managed so what is the container the container is just a carrier for the contents so when we look at our body mind intellect our body mind and intellect are apparatuses through which life energy works now life energy does not need to work because life energy as i said electricity it need not work it is starting from whatever is hydel electricity plant and it is going to our end user whichever is the point and maybe going ahead also if we don't switch it on it will not work otherwise it is just simply flowing from the time the electricity generated it is just simply flowing similarly life energy itself is what is there omnipotent all around us it doesn't need a container to express 
but only when a container comes in can it express itself and the container also whether it is our mind intellect body cannot express itself unless the energy flows through that so when we look at it that way for example if you look at space i'm my body is there a building is there all of us are actually occupying space if i die and my body is burnt what is left are ashes what happens to that entire six, uh, almost 6 feet structure which was there there is only space there because it is already burnt likewise when you look at buildings where are buildings built buildings are built on space you demolish the building what is left there is space so the container needs an expression space is omnipotent like that you look at life life is omnipotent life is what is there in all of us the expression is happening because life is there that is the way we need to understand and of course there was another question which was asked is whether the victim is the defender who says who who gets to choose who is the aggressor so when we look at this context of the war itself who called the war the pandavas called the war why did they call the war because what was rightfully theirs was denied to them they made whatever efforts were possible for peace despite their best efforts at peace peace did not happen so they said war is the last resort now i have to call the war so they declared the war but when we look at what happened in the battlefield the insecurity of the kauravas led by duryodhana that okay i am i have wronged or i have whatever guilt is there because of which the first conch had to be blown by bhishma so there is nothing like a victim becoming the defender or the aggressor is uh, somebody else circumstances define who who is the aggressor and who is the victim that we cannot there is no yardstick of measurement that way if you look at it so i now go on to the talk for today how do you tell your boss boss you are wrong the first thing that you will comes will come to your come to your mind is that you will risk losing your job so because of that risk you may probably not want to say that the boss is wrong in fact there is a beautiful management rule which i always quote rule number 1 the boss is always right rule number 2 if the boss is wrong refer rule number 1 so which means it is convenient that in an organization you always believe that the boss is right on that basis if we move ahead there is no risk of losing your job but what is the right person an employee who says boss you are wrong can you tell the boss the right thing inoffensively in a manner that you can't lose your job so this is what uh, drona's silence bhishma's conch blowing sanjay's own leaning towards pandavas it all actually tells us that drona could have answered everything that duryodhana was talking to him all the insults he said no you are a bloody fool there is no way i can talk to you so he shut up bhishma bhishma could have told him this is not the way to talk to your guru he was a grandfather he could have said you don't talk like that to your guru he kept quiet and ultimately what did bhishma, bhishma do all the other options have all exhausted today we are here on the battlefield to fight a war what is there to do what is there to talk what is there to say anything blow the conch so their silence spoke millions of words sanjay in the way he is narrating future now i am coming to the next part in uh, way he is narrating he is showing where his leanings are so now i am going to play i played up to verse 30 uh, 13 i am going to play verse 14 to 25 and this is actually the prelude or i would say the prelude to arjuna's disease the vishada ततःश्वेतैर्हयैद्युक्ते महति सिंदरे स्थितौ माधवः पाण्डवश्चैव दिव्यो शंखौ प्रदत्मतुः पाञ्चजन्यं हृषीकेशो देवदत्तं धनञ्जयः पौण्ड्रं दद्मौ महाशंखं भीमकर्मा वृकोदरः अनन्तविजयं राजा कुन्ती पुत्रो युधिष्ठिरः नकुलः सह देवश्च सुखो श्रवणि पुष्पकौ काश्यश्च परमेश्वा सह शिखण्डी च महारथः दृष्टद्युम्नो विराटश्च सात्यकिश्चापराजितः द्रुपदो द्रौपदेयाश्च सर्वशः पृथिवी पते 
सौभद्रश्च महाबाहु शंखा दत्मु पृथक पृथक सर्वोशोधाष्ट्राण हृदयायत नभस्च पृथिवी चु मुलोभ्युनादय अथ व्यवस्थिता दृष्टाधाष्ट्रांक ध्वज प्रवृत्ते शस्त्र संपाते धनुध्यम्य पांडव ऋषिकेश तदाक्यमी पते अर्जुन उवाच सेनोभ्ये रथम स्थापय मेच्युत यदेतान्ेहम योद्धु कामस्थिता कैमया सह योद्धव्यमस्णसमुद्य मे योत्सम्यक्षेहम ये तेत्र सगता धातराष्ट्र दुर्बुद्धे युद्धे प्रियचिकीर्षव संजय उवाच एव मुक्त ऋषिकेशो गुणाकेशे न भारत सेनोभ्ये स्थापय रथोत्तम भीष्मण प्रमुखत सर्वीक्षिता उवाच पार्थ पश्येतान्मेतान्ूनी सो हियर दिस वर्ष ट्वेंटी फाइव विच वॉज लास्ट वन is the one which ends with the only words that krishna spoke in the first chapter i will come to that when we are re- reaching reaching the end so when we look at this entire uh, narrative from 14 to 25 14 to 19 contains sanjay's narrative of pandava's superiority because of their righteousness now when you look at it that way basically what he is saying is if you uh, remember what i said last time in about two verses or three verses he spoke about how bhishma blew the conch and then after that it was followed by the others in trumpets and blah blah blah, blah whatever it was here he will start off by saying that madhava and the son of pandu who is arjuna in their divine chariot blew their respective conches that is how he started off in 14 now we uh, need to understand what is the divine chariot so i'll just share one picture first so those of you who are familiar with this uh, and uh, this this comparison or maybe identification of various things in the chariot krishna uh, the arjuna and krishna's chariot which was there in the war there are five horses now those five horses are our senses we see with our eyes we hear with our ears we smell with our nose we touch with our hands that is our skin we taste with our tongue every thing that we do in the world is through these five senses and these senses how do they act they act through a body because the senses need to need a body to act otherwise the senses can't exist by themselves so that body is the chariot who are we we are the passenger the jeevatma the passenger in that so the body and we the jeevatma we are the ones who function with these five senses who is the charioteer who is the krishna the krishna the charioteer is the discriminative intellect that we have which controls various senses which controls our body which controls the chariot itself into action that is desirable and prevents us from action that is undesirable so the discriminative mind intellect which is required to work in the world is the krishna who is holding those reins the reins are the mind and krishna who is holding those uh, reins of those senses and ensuring that they work in the right direction so i'll stop share of this we all have some krishna in our lives every day we encounter some krishna could be a teacher could be a child in the family could be us ourselves for somebody else anybody who guides us into the right channel of thought and action is a krishna for us for that moment we can be that krishna 
So, when we look at it that way, our entire life is geared by our being Krishna and many Krishnas being around us. We don't need that Krishna to come down, that blue-eyed boy or that blue-skinned boy to come down. We are all there. So, the question is how we interact with each other and how we grow collectively. That is, the, uh, that is also something which we need to understand. So, that is the life lesson that we need to know. Should we fight a losing battle? Many times we think about it. Should we fight a losing battle? But if we are meant to confront a situation, if we are meant to meet a challenge, come what may, it is something that we need to do. It is our duty of that moment that we have to make it happen. Then we should not backtrack. It is our duty to take it forward. So the problem is in the Arjuna Vishada Yoga, as we move ahead, we will understand that how like how Duryodhana was frightened because of his insecurity, because of his guilt, we have the case of Arjuna's disease also coming which will be uh, explained a little ahead. Between 15, 16, 17 and 18, our friend Sanjay is talking about the divine conscious of various people. In 15, he says Rishikesha, that is uh, uh, Krishna blew the Panchajanya, which is his conch. Then Dhananjaya, which is Arjuna, he blew, uh, blew the Devadatta. And then he says Vrkodara, which is the name for Bhima. He b uh, blew his conch called Poundara. So like this in 15, 16, 17, 18, Sanjay is talking about the various luminaries in the war from the Pandava side and how they respectively blew their respective conches. Why? So when you look at Sanjay as a narrator who has a feeling of what is right and what is wrong, he is probably telling his boss that, boss, look at what you are doing. Look at who they are. It is time that we look at whether we should really fight this losing battle. Is it something that is necessary for us to do? But he can't tell him because he will lose his job. That is beyond his mandate. So how does he say that? He tries to create a scare in the mind of the king. Who has the power to stop the war? The king has the power to stop the war. If he were to tell his son, no, there is no war. You have to give them whatever is rightfully theirs. Will anybody question him? Yeah, his son will throw a tantrum. That's a separate issue. But because he is Dhritarashtra, who is holding on to the kingdom as if it is his personal property, this entire issue had come about. So here is the case of an employee telling his master that, boss, I think this is not the right thing to do. In his own way, by putting the fear or insecurity of what the other side is holding. And this, he ends in 19 with saying that the tumultuous sound of all those various conches and those trumpets, etc., which were being blown by the Pandavas, rent heaven and earth with a tremendous thunder. So he is basically trying to say that it is so magnificent, it is so powerful, it is so, I mean, it is so challenging. That is something that we need to look at seriously. Should we move ahead? Without saying these words, this is what he is, uh, you know, uh, telling his boss. So, we have to also understand whatever actions that we do in life, are we prepared to accept that there is some wrong? We may can do many actions and it is possible that we may make mistakes. So, are we in a position to accept that we have made some wrong and correct it? What is the truth? The truth is something which you cannot hide forever. Truth will find its way some way or the other. Whatever analogies, whatever kind of excuses and whatever things that you may create to cover your wrong, truth will find its expression. I am reminded of a famous uh, lines from a Kishore Kumar song. Sachai chup nahi sakti banavat ke asulo se के खुशबुआ नहीं सकती कभी कागज के फूलों से अ फ्लावर मेड आउट ऑफ पेपर विल नॉट गिव यू फ्रेग्रेंस सो बाय क्रिएटिंग ऑल काइंड्स ऑफ यू नो फॉल्स प्रिंसिपल्स यू कैन नॉट हाइड दैट व्हिच इज द ट्रुथ सो एनी कैमोफ्लेज दैट यू क्रिएट इट इज गोइंग टू लीड टू योर डाउनफॉल so this is how uh, we move ahead. So the description of the conches and the reality of what the forces were, I explained to you. Now comes the entry of our great hero of the war. So before I ask the hero to enter, 
I am going to now break for if at all you people have any questions to ask, any suggestions to make, welcome. I will give you maybe 2-3 minutes. I will stop talking and we will take it forward after that. What does that mean? Participating or not is a choice. Participating in what? In the war? They had a choice. In the war, they had a choice that whether they should participate or not. Peace was given a chance. When the Virat war got over and when there is the peace efforts which were being made by the Pandavas, so much so that Krishna came up and said that you just simply give them five villages. If you go back to the example of what happened with Khandavprast and Indraprast, when the first game of dice they lost and because of the intervention of the seniors in the family, that kingdom was offered to be given back. Duryodhana said, no, 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 I will give them this Khandavprast, which is a barren piece of land. And Pandavas, by their own self-effort, they made that into a beautiful kingdom. So similarly, Krishna said, let there not be a war. You give them five villages. Why did he say that? When you look at it, is this a war between two a family of two cousins, sets of cousins? No. This was a war which actually would have annihilated an entire generation of people who were in no way connected with that conflict itself. A conflict of selfish interest of Duryodhana, a conflict of probably a wrong indiscreet choice made by Yudhishthira in going for a game of dice and even pawning his wife and brothers. So all these conflicts which were created would have created death and annihilation for a whole society. And that is something which was avoidable. Was Krishna not aware of it? Of course he was aware, he was God. Yet did he stop his effort? He went about his effort to ensure that peace be given a chance. So if peace stands a chance, we should give that a chance. Now the question is whether you want to enter into a conflict despite that chance being available. Pandavas were willing to forego the entire half of the kingdom and accept five villages. He said, I will not give you a pinprick. Now, was it because of the not being granted their uh, kingdom uh, or those uh, five villages that they fought? No, that led to a society where such kind of practices, such kind of wrongdoing will flourish and the society will go into a total indolence. It will become an extinct society. The goodness in society will vanish. So when what was meant to be a personal war between two sets of cousins became a war of a whole generation. It was a choice for both sides that you need not have participated. You could have avoided that. So Pandavas did their bit. I am willing to accept five villages. But they, that was not acceptable. Dhritarashtra had a chance. But he did not exercise that, exercise that choice. So now we are in the war field. That is what we need to understand. We will move ahead. So in verse 20, our hero is entering. Now when does an actor enter a stage? An actor enters the stage when the stage is ready for him to perform. So if we go to a play or if we go to a cinema, wherever we go, we have probably the first 5 minutes, 10 minutes, some movies start with the hero's face right on the first screen, different thing. But first 5 minutes, 10 minutes or 15 minutes, it's all about various other characters who are all preparing the story for the hero to enter or maybe the hero is a child and then the hero comes in. I'm meaning hero, I mean heroine also. Let's say I'm not gender biased. But uh, so the actor enters the stage when the stage is ready. When do we enter an arena of action? When we enter into an arena of action, we assume that the circumstances that are required for us to enter that action are ready, are conducive for us to enter. For example, I want to go and make a presentation to my company about some project, etc. When my team prepares the entire, uh, you know, the pack, the slide pack, which I have to present with all the explanations, the circumstances are conducive for me to enter the stage to make the presentation. I should be a good leader to say that, no, 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 I did not make it. My entire team did it. That's a separate issue. Circumstances are conducive for the actor to enter. So similarly, sometimes we are forced to enter because we don't, probably we don't believe in it, probably because we are the leader, entire the team prepared and we, we, we didn't know anything about it. Sir, we have to make a presentation, you have to go. We are forced to enter. And sometimes 
we enter by our own choice so we enter a stage of action either by choice or by compulsion driven by the circumstances which come to us so the actor comes to perform when the actor comes to perform no matter whether i came by choice no matter whether i came by uh, force coercion or whatever it is what i should have when i enter the uh, play, uh, you know field of action is i must have courage i must have courage if i knew everything i must have the courage that my team has done a good job and that i will be able to take the vision of the team forward with whatever corrections i feel are necessary and if i have been forced to enter without any preparation on my part i must have the courage that the work itself calls for my presence and i need to put my best step forward so that is the courage which is required when we enter a uh, field of action so who does this who does this action so the jiva that is me suresh my buddhi is telling me that i must go into the field of action and the buddhi is also telling me that i must be brave and ready to discharge my responsibility face whatever are the challenges which are coming our way and that is how i can be a courageous performer when i enter the field of action so this is what we call in our parlance normally if you look at it that way sports persons etc we uh, uh, we talk about they are getting an arjuna award etc correct because arjuna is meant to be that kind of a person a person who is ready to face the action he is the main warrior of the uh, entire pandava forces although the commander in chief is drishtadyumna and although his friend and his friend is krishna and the uh, emperor is yudhishthira the main warrior in that battle is arjuna so he we have to go like arjuna go bravely into a field of action and be ready so as they entered that in 20 and 21 arjuna is telling krishna who is his charioteer krishna is addressed as rishi kesha and arjuna is addressed as guda kesha so guda kesha is commanding rishi kesha please place the chariot in the midst of the battlefield so when we go to meet challenges what happens as i said the example is that i am going to make a presentation there are about 25 30 people who are there for making a, uh, you know listening to me so in the midst of the battlefield my powerpoint that uh, you know my whiteboard my uh, screen my laptop my pointer everything is there i am in the midst of that so the challenge is that i am now entering the midst of that so arjuna is telling krishna that you take my chariot to the midst of the battlefield so the intellectual mind which we have it tells the body and all the emotions that are there in the body that you move ahead bravely and be ready to face the challenges that is what it is krishna who is the intellectual mind the intellectual mind is now going into that with the emotional mind the body and everything and it is going into the midst of the battlefield that is what the verse 20 and 21 talks about and what does what else does arjuna says arjuna says i in the midst of those two armies i want to see who are those people standing in front of me and who, with whom i am to wage a war rightly so he knows who are the people on both sides yet he says i want to see with my own eyes so i am ready to the battle i am ready to face the challenge i am ready to go inside let me see who are those people with whom i am supposed to fight place the chariot there okay and i need to observe in this assembly who are those people who want to take this dharma yuddha forward that is what he says now after this arjuna has already said this now krishna has still not spoken sanjay is now the narrator is talking in 24 and 25 the narrator is saying this narrator says thus addressed by arjuna guda kesha rishi kesha placed the chariot in the center of the army of both the armies and after having placed it in the center of the army krishna says o partha behold these kurus gathered together kuru is the term used for the entire clan that bharata's descendants they are called the kuru dynasty 
so he says o oh, uh, partha see all these kurus assembled together these are the only words that krishna spoke in the first chapter now isko kya bolte hai pata hai isko ungli karna bolte hai he could have kept quiet what did arjuna say place my chariot in the midst of the battlefield krishna could have simply gone there and placed the chariot in the midst of the battlefield and not spoken anything बट उसने उंगली किया क्या उंगली किया सी दीज कुरूस हु आर एसेंबल्ड टूगेदर वॉट इज नीड फॉर हिम टू नीडल दिस बेसिकली टू रिमाइंड दैट मूव अहेड डिस्पाइट द चैलेंजेस दिस इज द मैसेज विदाउट सेइंग इट इन सो मेनी वर्ड्स दिस इज द मैसेज सो वॉट आर यू डूइंग यू आर नाउ लुकिंग एट सम चैलेंज राइट इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू एंड यू हैव टू जंप इन टू द चैलेंज that is what is the scene that we are seeing so let us have a look at that scene and basically krishna is also telling him i am reminded of uh, another song uh, of mukesh which is krishna basically krishna you are the lead warrior he is telling arjuna chal akela chal akela chal akela this is what he is saying you have to move ahead on your own because i am not going to fight for you you have to move ahead so when we are in the midst of that challenge where we have to do whatever we are supposed to do we have to be brave and say that yes i can take the mantle and do it myself so let us look at the challenge in a pictorial form so on the left of the screen you are seeing what arjuna krishna is there and arjuna is there behind arjuna is the entire pandava army in front of him is the kaurava army so he is telling at that point in time krishna is telling him look at the kurus assembled together now the kurus are not only in front of him the kurus are also the ones behind him it is like if you see the on the right of the picture somebody is ready to bungee jump he has to jump down of course the bungee is there with him no problem but he has to jump down the bungee is like krishna he is there with him but he has to jump down the courage to jump down is something which he has to muster himself and he has to jump down so that is the state in which krishna has placed arjuna now we will understand what is his disease because till now we have not come to arjuna's disease at all we will come to his disease i have a comment here from someone uh, just a second if the war was between adharma and dharma then did pandavas always tread the path of dharma <laughs> good question <laughs> now what is dharma as i said dharma really means we always seem to as, uh, uh, assume that dharma is righteousness that is what we we always think now when you really we will come ahead we will understand dharma in its perspective as we move ahead in the bhagavad gita there were things that pandavas did that they should not have done previous to the war and even after the war or during the war also also they did we know of those now there is a process of atonement that i need like for example i gave you the example of duryodhana yeah what he did was wrong dhritarashtra what he did was wrong there was a period when he could have corrected it it's not that if i do something wrong that wrong is going to remain as an imprint in my uh, with me forever i did a wrong i corrected myself they had an exile previous to the war they had an exile to correct whatever wrongs they did earlier and they also did a penance after the war if you know uh, mahabharata afterwards they did also a penance afterwards for whatever wrongs they did during the war so there is a way to deal with these things but when you are in the midst of a challenge that requires your attention with the best of your ability you cannot withdraw saying that no 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 this is not dharma this is escapism we will come to that that is arjuna's disease we will come to that so why is chapter 1 very important chapter 1 is very important because this is a common cause for all of us in the face of challenges whenever we are faced with a challenge we seem to think that the easier option is to avoid the challenge and it could be in whatever manner we have our own ways of avoiding the challenge and we seem to have conquered the challenge we tell others that we have conquered the challenge but actually we may have really escaped from the challenge that is also possible so this diagnosis is very is very important for a cure which is why bhagavad gita comes in for example i have fever 
slight fever. The easiest thing for me to do is, I'll go pick up a Dolo 650 and I will have that. Or I have a, um, let's say, throat infection and it is harassing me. I will have an erythromycin. Because these are self-medications which I know of and I will go and take it. But even after that, it is not becoming all right. I'll go to the doctor. Doctor will say, kya dawai kha? Bala, main Dolo 650 liya. Main erythromycin liya. Bala, tum doctor ho gaya kya? Maika ko baitha idhar. So this we need to understand that you need to go to a teacher who will guide you into the right direction whenever this vishada, this grief which is common to all of us, we need to understand, we need to go to a teacher, a teacher will guide us and the teacher need not be a physical form, the teacher could be something we have read, teacher could be somebody else's experience, teacher could be something we heard, something we encountered in the course of our experiences, learn from that and use that to meet the challenge. So when we look at it in this fashion, we come to what Arjuna responds to Krishna's statement saying, look at these Kurus assembled in front of you. So from 26, verse 26 to 28 and a half, Sanjay is describing, Sanjay is describing the state of mind of Arjuna. What he says that Arjuna saw his own fathers, fathers meaning uncles also, grandfathers, teachers, maternal uncles, brothers, sons, grandsons, friends, fathers-in-law and he became sorrowful. So what happened? A person who was otherwise very geared to take challenges, he was one of the greatest warriors of his time. When he went to meet that challenge in front of him, what did he do? He saw these kind of people who were his near and dear ones and he became sorrowful. So now a warrior is feeling like that. It is like, you know, for example, uh, somebody is giving a donation, like I am a rich man, I want to give a donation. And I said, okay, I will donate 1,000,000 rupees for this cost. At my heart, I want to say that he will come and say, Suresh Seth, you are so good, you have given us 1,000,000 rupees. I feel very happy inside. Suresh Seth said, I have given us 1,000,000 rupees for this, thank you. I am doing it for that. Whereas, actually, it should be for charity. The best form of charity is that what the left hand does, the right hand should not know. That is the best form of charity, isn't it? We have heard of that. But basically my weakness, my vanity is my weakness. I want that. So I am saying I am call four other people. Unke saamne check dega. Why? You want to give? Do something? Do it. Why do you want to remember it? This is like that. This is the kind of mindset in which we are. Despite wanting to do good, despite wanting to meet a challenge, we have our own weaknesses which come into play. Here Arjuna's weakness is coming into play. The relationship that he had with his near and dear ones. That is coming into fight. Now in 28 and a half, 28, uh, it is split into two because in 28, there is a statement which starts with and after that Arjuna speaks. For the first time Arjuna speaks there. What he says? He says, seeing my own kinsmen arrayed in war against me, I have lost all courage. My limbs fail me. My mouth is parched. My body quivers, my hair stands on its end. These are all signs normally if you look at uh, the signs of psychology, these are all signs of hysteria. These are all signs of paranoia. I am mean, being extremely uh, agitated. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. The kind of thing that you do when you are in hysterical state, this is what happens. So suddenly a brave warrior who was prepared his entire lifetime for war and war and war and war. he has won many wars in his lifetime the most important war of his lifetime in his he's coming in front of that battlefield seeing those people arrayed against him and he's saying my limbs fail me my mouth is parched my body quivers my hair stands on its end my gandiva the uh, bow which i am holding which is the most important weapon is slipping from my hand my skin is burning, I am unable to stand, my mind is whirling. This is the kind of mental state in which Arjuna has gone into. So suddenly that warrior who was meant to be the savior of the entire generation is losing his own equanimity in the face of such a big challenge. And then in 31 he goes on to say, I can see bad omens. What we do when we are, as I said, no, when we are in a challenge and we want to escape from it, we start finding various means and uh, you know methods of finding excuses to avoid it. So I am seeing bad omens. This is what he says. So in this state of mind is what Arjuna is. So 
and then he will prattle with a few uh, you know uh, set of new excuses what i'm now going to do is i'm going to play verse 32 to 37 where he is going to give a bundle of new excuses and i will deal with those in the next class and this will take only one minute and then if you have any questions you can definitely tell me oh i'm sorry i forgot i did not play 26 to 32 so i'm going to play both of them i'm going to play 26 to 37 i'll deal with 32 to 37 in the next class tatra pasyat sthitan parthah pitrilatha pitamahan acharyan maturan bhatre putran pautran sakhi satha shvashuran suhrudaschaiva sedayorubhayorapi tan samiksha sakaunte yah sarvan bandhuna sthitan kripaya paraya vishto vishidan nidam abravid Arjuna Uvacha Drishtve Mam Swajanam Krishna Yujutsum Samupasthitam Siddhanti Mamagatrani Mukham Chaparishushyati Vepathushya Sharire Me Roma Harshashya Jayate Gandhi Mam Sramsate Hasta Tvakchai Vaparidahyate Najashaknom Yavasthatum Brahmati Vajame Manaha Nivittani ca pasyami viparitani keshava Na ca shreyo nu pasyami hatva svajana mahave Na kaangshe vijayam krishna na ca rajyam sukhani ca Kim no rajye na govinda kim bhogai jeevite nava येशा मर्थे कांशितम् नो राज्यम् भोगा सुखानिच तरिमेवस्थिता युद्धे प्राणांस यक्वाधनानिच आचार्या पितरह पुत्रास तथै वचपिता महा मातुला श्वशुरा पौत्रा शाला संबंधिनस्तथा एता नहंतु मिच्छामी नतो पिमधु सोधन अपित्रै लोक्य राज्यस्य हेतो किम्नु मही कृते निहत्य धार्त राष्ट्रान्नह काप्री तिस्याग जनार्दन पाप मेवाश्र ये दस्मान हत्वै तानात ताइनह तस्मान नार्हाव यम्हंतुम धार्त राष्ट्रां स्वबांधवान स्वजनम ही कथम हत्वा सुखि So I end uh, today's session here. We will take to 32 to 37 and then uh, probably we will try to conclude chapter 1 in the next uh, session. I will go as per how he takes me. I have no agenda that this is how it has to be done. I am just taking it as it comes. And as I said, I welcome all your comments. You can share your comments on WhatsApp. You can share your comments as it comes here. And thank you for uh, being with me and wish you all a very good evening and a very nice weekend. I'll close with the prayer. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Yom Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Yom Thank you.